Hey, good morning, YouTube. This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Accurate Engines here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Accurate Engines is your number one home for remanufactured engines. If you've got a question on the difference between a remanufactured engine and a rebuilt engine, I'll be happy to answer them. Just hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. If you want to reach out to these guys and say thank you for sending this video our way, please, please do so. It makes me look better, obviously. Remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. In this video, we're actually going to remove an engine through the top out of a Chevy Equinox. This can be done on the Chevy Equinox and the GMC terrain. Now, the thing to remember is this video is not a nut and bolt video, but we are going to bring you a nut and bolt video on this in the future. So please look in the playlist for that or look on the channel. So right now, uh, we don't cover everything and we skip over quite a few things. I've already edited this video out. It turns out pretty good. But remember, we're just trying to send a positive message that you can do this in your driveway efficiently and easily. It's really not that big of a deal to remove this engine through the top like I once thought it was. You got to take a lot of things apart, but trust me. It's a four-cylinder engine. They're not that hard to do. If you will, consider subscribing, clicking the notification, sharing my videos, and sending me them sweet old thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Also remember that you can get your very own Clayway Premium Plus engine here. We offer something that no one else in the country offers. Just get a hold of me. And I'll be getting you one of these brand new sweet beautiful engines for your car. Don't worry, I certainly know that I can be a little bit ridiculous and silly at times. So let's go. Hey, what's up YouTube? This is Clay with Clay's AC and Auto Repair and Accurate Engines here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. This gentleman right behind me, his name is Frank and he is the master technician over here at Accurate Engines. And he's gonna show us how he removes an engine out of a Chevy Equinox GMC train through the top. Unlike your boy here, he doesn't remove them through the bottom like I did in the past. He says he can get it out of here through the top. And I have no reason to doubt him. This is not gonna be a nut and bolt removal or any of that stuff, but we're gonna to try to give you as good a description as possible of how you can get this out in your driveway. He's also gonna give us some awesome tips on burping it out and what kind of problems that we run into with these engines and what happens. With this particular engine right here, it actually has a rear main seal, but because of the miles, we're gonna remanufacture the whole engine. So one of the first things Frank did is he removed the computer off the top of the battery. He's disconnecting all the computer components and stuff like that. He's, are you gonna take the battery out, Frank? Yes, I do. Just to make it a little easier and more room to get the valve housing bolts out. So check this out. We definitely got condensation inside the coolant. Now Frank tells me that Underneath the intake, there's actually a PVC hole that is plugged, and he's gonna show it to us. And I think that that's super interesting. He actually showed me earlier, we shot a little bit of video of it, but there was really no background and the reason to show you that. So we're gonna show it during this video. I'm gonna dump this air cleaner off of that 2-4. And you see how much water and stuff came out of there. And that's why you get that oil water mixture out of that tube is because of the intake being plugged at the PVC system. Hmm. And you can probably dump some more water out of it. Well, we're going to show you that here in a minute when he gets this intake off this engine. It's all about it. A lot of your 2.4 GM motors have a PVC system. So you get a lot of oil in the intake or water build up in the uh, air filter housing. It's because of the PVC hole here is plugged up. And you don't want to make the hole too big, you just want to use a little pick, run it down there, and just kind of clean out the hole, and then blow it out with some carb cleaner and a blow gun, and it should be good. Um, if you make it too big, you'll get a weird noise in the intake system because it's got way too much vacuum. So you just wanna use a real small pick and just kind of pick it through there and, and that's it. What does this problem actually cause? Loss of oil, smoking out the exhaust, and your, your basically your intake will be full of oil and as well as your air tube coming off the throttle body will be full of oil. 
Huh. As well. That's interesting. Well, thanks, Frank. We appreciate it. Yeah. And I'm sure people out in YouTube land will absolutely love it. Now we're going to disconnect everything that we can see on the top of the engine from the engine itself. It's going to remove all the bolts from the intake, removing the throttle body assembly, 5 16 fuel line remover tool. Uh, you're going to need to pick that up. There are a couple bucks at any parts store. You push the tool into the line towards you and then push the line towards the tool and then pull it back. Now he's got a simple set of pliers and he's gonna work this hose off this line. Wires that are connected to the brackets need to be removed. Okay, so what we've got is we've got a ground wire back there on the, is it on this part of the head or is it on the back side? It's on the back side facing towards the front. Okay. And sometimes the bolt likes to stick on the eyelet of the ground wire so you kind of want to pull on the wire as you're turning the bolt out. Okay. Frank is going to start sweating because he tells me that he can have this engine out in 45 minutes. I don't believe him personally. I think he's going to be closer to like <laughs> two hours, two days or something like that. But we'll just have to see what happens. I'll let you know at the end of the video how long it actually took. So you guys can see that bolt is hanging down right there. That's the one we were talking about. Okay, so Frank removes the O2 sensor so he can get the exhaust cover off because the catalytic converter bolts to the downpipe of the exhaust. And he's actually gonna remove the exhaust manifold, I'm assuming from the rear of the engine prior to repulling the engine? No. Frank tells me that if this vehicle was all wheel drive, he would have to remove the exhaust manifold to get to some of the bolts at the back of the engine. But because it's only front wheel drive, he doesn't have to do that to be able to remove the engine through the top. Now, one of the other things during this process is we're gonna remove this cover that covers our high pressure fuel pump. Okay, I just asked Frank what size the lines were on the high pressure fuel pump and he tells me 11 16 Now, most of us know that everything nowadays is metric, all right? But I'm gonna tell you why I'm impressed that he said 11 16 Because Frank's been working on cars so long that he uses standard tools to do metric jobs. Now. The reason that that's important and impressive is because now he's working on a 2012 and he's using standard tools. So that means he's been working on cars a lot longer than I've been alive. I loosen the motor mount. I take the two big 18 millimeter nuts off and then I take the two 15s out and I leave one 15 bolt in there just to support the engine so I can do the rest of the work. Okay, so Frank tells me this is as far as he's gonna go with the top. I'm gonna give you a little bit of overview and he tells me the reason that he's not done anything with the coolant yet is because when he's working underneath, he doesn't wanna have coolant dripping all over him. So that makes sense to me. And you can see that we basically just did some wiring, disconnected the shield, got the catalytic converter bolts out of there and so forth and so on. There's nothing that you guys couldn't see at home that he's done yet to this vehicle that was super special. Okay, there's seven bolts that hold down the intake and once you remove that, we can start removing the serpentine belt off of the engine. We are gonna remove the AC compressor and the alternator from the engine. Down there on the tensioner assembly, you just insert your ratchet, it's 3 8 square and you can loosen the serpentine belt. You will turn the ratchet clockwise to loosen the serpentine belt. To be able to remove the alternator, we're going to need to remove the post that's affixed to the block to pull the alternator out. Using a quarter inch drive, five millimeter, and remove the stud that holds the alternator to the block. That way we're able to get it out without disconnecting the air conditioning lines. Okay, we're going to remove the 5mm stud right down there 
for the AC compressor to be able to pull it off the rest of the way. Now we're going to remove the 13 millimeter nut that holds on the battery cable to the starter, plus we're going to remove the two bolts that are holding the starter to the engine block. I have video of us just removing a starter out of one of these, and it's really easy to do without taking it apart. Now with the starter out, that gives us easy access to the rear torque converter bolts. We need to remove the rear torque converter bolts so the torque converter stays up inside the transmission when we pull the engine out. Now we're gonna raise the vehicle up and support it on jack stands and start removing the brackets from the back. Now we're gonna remove the brackets from the back side of the engine right up in here. Now we're gonna look up in here and remove the torque converter bolts by simply turning the harmonic balancer on the front of the engine, getting us access to each bolt that needs to be removed. When you're taking out the rear bolts up, up inside here, on the back side, and I'm gonna try to get you up in there. Yeah, right up inside there is a bolt that is hidden. So we need to re remove that bolt. And that bolt went in just like this. You do not have to unplug this plug to the power you steering. Never get that plug out of there. Me neither usually. I don't usually pull it, but I usually try every time. <laughs> what do you do if you can't get it out of there? I just let the push the wire and harness back to the firewall, which I'm gonna because I can't get this I've had people ask me about getting that plug harness out of there and I'm like, I can't get that plug. I've never been able to get that out of there. I've never had had to, kind of like you, right. but I've tried. Okay, so we pulled the two rear hoses off of the main thermostat housing that is connected to the engine. And we also pulled off the thermostat housing with the main hose connected to it down here with these two bolts. Thanks, Al. Okay, not trying to make this look super simple or anything like that. You're right. It, we're ready to pull the engine up out of here, and we've got the jack, and he's lifting the motor up out of here, and we're going to soon see this actually come up through the top. So, yeah, that old girl is out of there. It's a done deal, pal. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool because over the, I usually took them out through the bottom, and over the years, I had, you know, people people seen me do it and they do it the same way that I show them to do it, you know. Right. But showing somebody how to do it through the top actually works out really well. Oh, you got a lot of happy pants. Yeah, he's I'm free. I'm free. Thank you. I'm you all know. Know. Oh, Frank said he's got everything but the top done. <laughs> No, I said that. <laughs> I did not say that. I said. No, I said Lanny. Oh. Lanny said he had everything but the top. Oh, he's already got the bottom done. He just Okay, right here, Frank is going to show us to make sure that we look down inside the catalytic converter after we remove the engine to make sure that the honeycombs aren't bad. These things are known for the converter to be bad, but that one's good. You can see the honeycombs are in good shape. Oh, nice. Uh. Okay, so this is what we're left with after we've gotten the motor taken out. And you can see that most of the electrical is disconnected. We obviously left the electrical connected to the power steering. And don't forget about this ground wire. There's a ground wire on here and I, oh, they didn't even take it off of there. So you don't have to worry about hooking that back up. This bolt up here is the one that we were talking about that's blind that you can't really see. I don't remember if it's in this this one right here or if it's in this one back here, but as long as you get all of them out, you should be successful in removing it. Make sure when you're reinstalling the engine that this clamp is backwards. Frank is gonna explain. Place it in that position. And then I put a little tape around it just to hold it in place when you're putting the motor back in. Okay. And that's about the only thing that we should have to worry about because that mount is still hooked up there. And you don't really have to unplug that. That can stay off connected. It could? Yep. Hmm. One other thing, Frank pointed out that on these exhaust manifolds, they like to crack. And I think we can see that that's evident right here. We've got a small crack and how we can tell that is because it's black and the rest of it's rusted. 
So you definitely want to check your exhaust manifold when you pull your engine out. More than likely, it's going to need replacing. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you have a question for me, hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook Messenger. Reach out to Accurate Engines and tell them that you appreciate the Clayway bringing you this video, saving you a couple hundred dollars from taking it to the repair shop. Hopefully you feel a little bit more informed and you can thank Mr. Lanny Hassel down here at Accurate Engines for paying for this video so you guys could see it. God bless and have the greatest of days. And remember, if anyone else can do it, you can do it too. Don't be the next of them. Be the first of you.